Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Um, let's welcome our guest, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Good morning. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining you us. Hope you enjoyed the democracy day. Yes, we did at work. Thanks. How about you? Yeah, well, it was tolerable. All right, let's get straight into it. The Nation newspapers this morning, the government considers pension for MKO's next of kin, Kingabe. This democracy, not what Abiola died for, says Kola, says son Kola. Insurance firms merge as coming. World leaders OK Tokyo 2020. Air Force didn't bomb party guest. Bennett replaces Netanyahu as Israeli prime minister. Nigerians seek urgent action on electricity crisis. Homes, firms remain in darkness. Discos blame it on low supply. 12 abducted in Zaria, Reverend Sister in Imu. Oyegu to Buhari, listen to agitators. G7 OK $650 billion loan for IMF to end COVID-19. Uber drivers arrested or Uber driver arrested with cocaine. Buhari, others greet Abdus Salami at 79. Undame, with 800 billion naira extra vote, no excuse for military. Woman sells two daughters for 300,000 naira. Suspect held in Ogun. Forex Reserve hit four-year low. And lastly, on the Nation newspaper, gunmen kill policemen in attack on station. All right. The Nigerian Tribune, which comes next, uh, the big one there says, uh, food prices soar push more Nigerians into poverty. Farmers in Katsina, Zamfara and Sokoto blame banditry kidnapping. Federal government speaks on recovery plan. Bandits abduct eight family members in Zaria and convoke a sovereign national conference, decentralize police, Anglican Church tells federal government. 800 billion naira supplementary budget. Our army has no excuse not to defeat insurgency, says Ndume. Amnesty International, Serap, and 69 other CSOs ask Buhari to reverse ban on Twitter. Want UN and AU to pressure federal government. Also in the Nigerian Tribune, police recover 1.3 uh, million from suspected kidnappers in Abuja. Uh, Netanyahu ousted as Israel approves new government. Also in the Tribune, one or two others. Uh, Democracy Day, Buhari's speech exposed him as one not serving Nigeria's interests, says Afenifer, challenges presidency on grazing routes. These are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune. Oh, also, Nigeria and the burden of a 33 trillion naira debt. Hmm. Interesting one there. On the Punch newspaper, Buhari's Cal Roots Gazette doesn't exist. Grazing ban stays, says states. Now, Akira Deleuze aid tells federal government, show us grazing routes in Ondo if it exists. Governor Autumn says no part of Benue designated as grazing route. And a senator here saying law, not federal law. Buhari lacks powers to implement it. Above the headline on the Punch newspaper, defaulting insurers selling assets over outstanding claims. My come. Oil price. Experts dismiss gains as subsidy nears 200 billion naira. 936 students abducted from Nigerian schools in six months. Anonymous group writes Okowa threatens attack over grazing ban. A report here says Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya to tap Sub-Saharan Africa's e-commerce. Anamechi says poverty, inequality at the root of Nigeria's underdevelopment. We see a picture here in the Israeli Knesset with people rejoicing and celebrating on the streets and the, the caption reads, Islamist joins Israeli government as Prime Minister Netanyahu loses votes to opposition coalition. French ambassador says Twitter ban won't solve social media menace. Ogun State rakes in 40 billion naira internally generated revenue in the first quarter of 2021, plans 25% growth. Brazil returnee caught with cocaine hidden in pants at Lagos Airport. FRSC blames wrongful overtaking as eight killed in Bauchi or Shun crashes. Ogun housewife negotiator arrested over sale of daughters for 300,000 naira. Hulam's return to Lagos Ibadan Long Bridge and residents raised the alarm. Those are the ones on the Punch newspaper. On the Daily Sun, 
Dokubo's Biafra group tackles Buhari over description of Igbo as a dot in a circle. Also on the Daily Sun this morning, gunmen attack Zaria again, abduct 12 stu uh, residents. Uproar over plan to reopen grazing route. It will set Nigeria on fire. NAF, Afenifere, Igbo groups one federal government, insist open grazing not permissible now. And also anonymous letter threatening mayhem over ban in Delta. State security. Don't abandon your responsibility. Masari, Kaigama and group uh, uh, charge Buhari. Reverend sister and another woman abducted in Imo church. We can also see on the Daily Sun, NRC begins Lagos Ibadan train service tomorrow. Face off imminent in the Senate over fresher loan request. And Twitter ban government officials, others switch to Indian app. Cool. All right, these are the stories that we have on the Daily Sun. On the Daily Independence, corruption under Buhari fueling insecurity. That's according to a report. Says Nigerians disappointed over his response to grafts. Also, labor laws, labor draws battle lines against Ibadan discos. Also, we see this story here saying arrest of June 12 protesters illegal. That's according to Falano. Dangote $2 billion urea fertilizer plant pushes out 120 trucks daily. Secundus denies having issues with Governor Wiki. Why Nigerian airlines can't benefit from bilateral air service agreements. 70 CSOs ask federal governments to reverse Twitter ban. Netanyahu ousted as Israeli Prime Minister ends 12-year rule of Jewish state. Gunmen attack police station in Akwa Ibom Q1. Oyegu urges APC to restructure for nation's survival. I think those are the stories we can take a look at of the newspapers today. Um, thanks again, Mr. Kolawale, for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so uh, with all the papers we've seen, so many headlines, but uh, about two or three papers uh, talk about the reaction to the grazing routes for cows that President Muhammad Buhari ordered last week. States are saying it will set the country on fire. Um, others are saying there are no grazing routes in their states and dead the federal government to show them where they are. So where do you come in uh, with the story? Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, I will try and um, marry three of those uh, stories together. Okay. The one coming from Paula Diola saying that um, the democracy is further died for. It's not what is being practiced today, or it's not what Nigeria uh, expects. Then I will relate that with uh, the president's speech during this uh, democracy day, and some of the very fundamental pronouncements that he made, especially with regard to the greasing, greasing roots. He also talked about insecurity in that uh, speech. The German team, as it were, when I watched the president's speech on television and also read uh, the details in the paper, and I've read it more than three times and more. On reading those, uh, that, that speech, I went for Nigeria. My heart bled. I felt sorry uh, for, 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 for the entire 200 million Nigerian people because the speech, in my humble opinion, is anti delivered that it is not a mirror of reality. It's like the president is not in consonance with what is on ground in contemporary Nigeria. Take, for example, the, the grazing rules. Most of the grazing, the cases, most of the law on the grazing rules were made by the colonial masters uh, when they were here. And most of those uh, cases actually apply to the northern parts of the country, not to southern Nigeria. And at the time, that those laws or those edicts were made. The population of Nigeria was in 200 million. Desert has not encroached to where it has encroached today. The population of us men is also not what it is today. And besides that, the land in Nigeria is domiciled in the governors under the land use decree. But the president went and said he wants to revive the, uh, the crazy roots. Based on the law that was made in the, in, the, in the 50s and the 40s by colonial masters and all that. So, I'm saying, how is that possible? 
all the land that you find in Nigeria today because of urbanization and what have you, have been taken over by urbanization. Take, for example, from Ibadan to Lagos. All the land from Ibadan to Lagos have all been bought. So for the president to be saying 21st century, that is going to revive the grazing roots and all that, and reclaim those lands from those who have encroached on them, for God's sake, that is practically impossible. And it doesn't even serve the interest of the Fulani Afghan. Why do I say so? Most of the kidnappers, especially most of the Fulani Afghan who have been arrested and all that, their basic complaint is that, look, you didn't send us to school. The country that we also drive all over the country doesn't belong to us. It is some big men the society that own those cattle. We are merely employees of these people. So it's, the president should be thinking of a sedentary agriculture of ranking in which the full and people will settle in a particular place, water and fodder to feed the animals. So it will be provided and then their children will be able to go to school so that they can embrace modern husbandry. But the president is not looking at it that way. He's thinking about reviving a great rule that was, uh, was created in the 40s and the 50s when Nigeria's uh, population and desert encroachment and what have you has not been like this or has not as big as this. I know of one of the, the great reserves in, uh, in uh, Ibadan, for example, at the time it was even the federal government that converted it to a narrow truck. And when the federal government built a bigger air permit, uh, airport in the battle, they relocated and allocated that road drop. And why like they share the land among themselves? So is that what they are going to reclaim? Or Mr. Kola Oli. The second one is that uh, the president is saying that the governor should secure their respective states. How is that possible? When the governor cannot give an order to a commission of police to do certain things without clearance from the inspector general of police. And the inspector general of police himself would have to clear from the president as the commander-in-chief. And you will recollect, when the attack on Bimbe State first started and all that, the president told Nigeria that he gave the inspector general of police an order to go to Bimbe and restore and restore normalcy in there. The inspector general of police didn't go to Bimbe State. And not the left office was never sanctioned. Nobody gave up an explanation. Why the Secretary General of Police declined or refused to obey the order of Mr. President? Or Mr. Kola Wale. If we have left the governors Let in this kind of a dilemma, how do you expect them to solve the security challenges in their respective place? All right, can you hold and on? And we also know that can you hold on, Mr. Costs Kola Wale. a lot of money. Yeah, can you hold on? Yes. Because of uh, yes. the time that we have left, I, I want us to also move into other things. Uh, this morning, there's uh, kidnapping in Zaria once again. Um, and of course, uh, there's a story on uh, rising food prices. It's on the Tribune this morning. It says uh, food prices soar, uh, push more Nigerians into poverty. Um, quickly share your views on that one. Uh, the president, of course, had stated um, in the, on his Democracy Day speech that they had lifted 10 million Nigerians out of poverty. But if you look at you know, what the situation is on ground and how much um, uh, food prices have increased, a lot of Nigerians can't afford the basic uh, food items um, anymore. Well, um, one should not be surprised that um, Katrina State has become the hotbed of uh, kidnapping and insecurity. And I would think, in my humble opinion, that the governor of that state should be held responsible. Go and check the statistics. Since he became governor, the number of people that he has returned, the number of houses that he has, uh, he has uh, destroyed, pulled down, and also the salaries of people that are not being paid. When you take people out of their job, when you destroy people's homes and all that, of course, their children, uh, if you have nothing to eat, are likely to take to banditry. And apart from me, uh, addressing the issue of banditry, he will tell you as at one time or the other, pay some money to some, this is not ready to pay again. And he says inflammatory things. Take the key of the legal state people. Just when the president came around in here, we saw the number of vehicles, we saw choppers, we saw scooters, we saw AK-47 that the legal state people and um, security trust for. And both are not going to use to equip the Nigerian police and other security people. We also know that they pay special allowances. 
So these policemen to be able to do the needful task. They also ensure them. As well as uh, the government of Katina says made that kind of effort to quench the insecurity in there. So it's comfortable. With regards to the prices of food items, it shouldn't be surprising. Just yesterday, a lady friend of mine called me and said, look, he sent somebody to the market to buy pepper. And when the person came, she gave the person 1,000 naira. When the person came back with the 1,000 naira pepper and all that, lo and behold, she was shocked that the, the amount of pepper that the person brought is equivalent to what they used to buy for 15 naira in the past. And this is basically because most of the farmers can no longer go to their farm because of insecurity. You remember all those farmers who were slaughtered in cold blood in Borono State. And what explanation did they get? They said, look, they didn't take care of from government before they went to their farm. So when you and I are going to our offices to do our work, we need to inform the nearby police DPO that we want to go to work. We should provide security cover. Is that the way things are done? Furthermore, so many things ought to have been done since all these insurgencies started in the, some 10 years ago. One of it, one of it very fundamental, is a war industry. All over the world, any country where there is war, a war industry usually springs up. But because of corruption, money that we could invest in agriculture, in infrastructure, and all that, we are using to import AK-47, we are using to import bombs, grenades, and landmines. When Boko Haram are producing all those things locally, I am of the opinion that in Mosin Muto, uh, Pan in Kaduna and some of these other families around the country can be reconfigured to be producing most of the arms and ammunition that we are using to fight this war. The only thing we should be reporting today to fight the war against the Boko Haram is aeroplanes and uh, attack helicopters. Like of foresight, and the country is bleeding. Furthermore, when the country's resources is dwindling, when money that we expect as revenue is dwindling, what most countries used to do, where the leaders are put on their thinking cap in that end, they will direct their energies into agriculture. Because once you are able to provide food for the people and all that, the problem is 50% solved. Then you cannot begin to address other things. When last, go and see all the agric agricultural the first institutes. Well, I say, in the past, a percentage of local government income is usually devoted to buying tractors, harvesters, seedlings, and all that, that are given to farmers at very, very cheap rates. They hire those tractors to till their land. You will just buy petrol or diesel to power those tractors. And the all local right. government Mr. will Mr. send Mr. them Mr. Um, yeah. ap apologies. I wanted us to quickly talk about the story. Um, over the weekend, it was all we could uh, talk about, the Democracy Day celebrations, the June 12th protests. And we know that the protests, you know, have been set to continue today in some parts of the country. And uh, Femi Falano here has been talking about the arrest of protesters, saying it's illegal and that the police need to apologize to protesters. Um, what do you think about this uh, situation? Oh, absolutely. Sammy Palana is the same, the obvious. And you remember the case of even uh, uh, ANPP, which, uh, of which platform President Mohamed Buhari was run for the presidency, and the uh, Inspector General of Police. There was a time in which uh, they were arrested, and I mean, Buhari and Co went to court to challenge the harassment from the police from preventing them from um, uh, carrying out protests and demonstrations. And the Court of Appeal is with some rules that protests and uh, agitation such as we saw this last thing is an in and in the the fundamental human rights provided for by the United Nations Charter, Africa Charter on People and Women's Rights, the Nigerian Constitution, Equal Charter on no People and Women's Rights. But President Buhari and Co have also used this uh, uh, charter to their own advantage to demonstrate against President Kulo Chonata when he was in power. So why is it now, now, now unlawful for Nigeria to demonstrate when all the laws are cited says clearly that people should be allowed to demonstrate and all at least when they feel agreed about anything? Because a decent society, a rational society, a, a society that doesn't want a anarchy and all that, would achieve such by only two, three means. The rule of law, 
free press and also protest and demonstrations. When they see speaking, you let the government and the people in power know. But here we say protests and agitations are unlawful. So in a way, we are encouraging people to carry weapons, to carry guns, to begin to challenge government programs that is antithetical to their existence. So I agree with Jeremy Fallon now. And we lawyers, we have already formed a team. All the people that have been detained, as soon as the court resumes uh, on Tuesday, we will be in court to challenge the obnoxious uh, 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 arrest and prosecution of these people. Mm. And we are also going to be petitioning the United Nations and International Criminal Court about the criminal activities of, uh, of, of, of the people in government. So that when they are out of this government, any time they come out of the country, they can be arrested and brought to court. And the kind of thing they have done to the former chief of uh, air staff, army staff, and war army, in which immediately they are retiring, they gave them a diplomatic passport so that they can be immune to arrest when they travel out the country. Who will protect them? Who will prevent that from happening? Okay. All right. Okay, you know, Mr. So Mr. Tunde Kalawale, I think uh, here's where we draw the curtains on Off the Press. Thank you very much for your time and thoughts every time in Off the thanks Press. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take a break here and uh, we'll return to tell you what happened today. You have a lovely day. Oh, yes. Bye. All right. We'll return to tell you what happened today in history and we're talking business and the economy.